Ignite students. We're ready. It's going to be a good day. We're wrapping up everything to do with plate, vol plate volcanics, plate tectonics, and volcanism. So let's begin. You know, there are over 800 active volcanoes in the world. And um, here's a map of global earthquakes, not of volcanoes. Uh, here you go. This is uh, active volcanoes, but this is just the Pacific plate. This is a better map. This structure right here is the ring of fire. This is the Pacific Ocean, and any good geology map really splits the world like this, with this in the middle, or at least not, you don't cut the map right here. So, all right. Look, again, that's in the middle, and you cut right there. So then you can see all this other stuff. This is the ring of fire. And you can see all of this one shows volcanoes. Lots and lots of volcanoes. There are some in the U.S. Look here down in the Andes Mountains, the Aleutian Islands, Hawaii, all over. But how does that relate to plate tectonics? Okay. So the basic, the basic connection between plate tectonics and volcanism is that the movement of the plates gives the mechanisms that, you know, allow the rock to melt and a ra mantle rocks to melt and create magma. Okay. So we need to look at a couple types of, oh, no. we need to look at a couple types of plate boundaries. There's converging, there's diverging. So on a converging plate boundary, you could have two oceanic plates converging, or you could have an oceanic and a continental plate converging. Anytime you have two converging plates, you're going to have one subduct under the other as they move past each other. Okay, cool. Here we go. This, these are the Aleutian Islands. So this is Alaska, this is Alaska, this is Alaska, this is Alaska, this is Alaska. That's, uh, these are all Aleutian Islands. This is two ocean plates colliding. The Pacific plate, all right, and I'm going to pause because I'm blanking on the name of the other plate here. There's two ocean plates colliding, and one is moving under the other. It's subducting underneath the other. And when you do this, you get this chain of volcanoes along the ocean floor, and they grow and they become islands slowly. All right? So we've got that. That was a good one. That one we don't need anymore. That one we don't need anymore. All right. So we've got these Aleutian Islands right here. What's happening? You've got oceanic crust here. You've got oceanic crust here. One is subducting under the other, and you get molt, you mantle rocks melt, and you get a hot spot that allows the mantle to rise, the molten magma to rise, and you get this volcanic arc, not exactly where the trench is. And that's what's happening all along the Aleutian Islands. All right. Now, what if instead of ocean, ocean plate, one subducting under the other, what if it was crust, ocean? And if you have a, a continental plate and an oceanic plate, the continental plate will always float or ride on top. The oceanic plate will always subduct and go under. Because continent rock is less dense. Rock is less dense. Rock floats on ocean rock. So, same as before. A couple little differences. A um, lot more silica in this. You get a different type of magma. You get more silica in the magma. But here we go. The Andes Mountains cut off right here. So look, there's the Aleutian Islands. Let's click that out here. The Andes Mountains 
Where is this? This is the southern half of South America. Here is the northern half of South America. The Andes Mountains run all along this west coast. It is, I mean, the country of Chile is Andes Mountains. So you have this Pacific plate out here going underneath this plate here, the North or South American plate here is, and it is, this plate is riding on top. So what's happening? As you get the oceanic crust subducting under, you're going to get melting. This continental crust is here. This molten mantle is going to rise in magma plumes and create mountains, volcanic mountain chain. So the Andes Mountains on the western side of South America are volcanic mountains because this ocean, uh, the Pacific plates under, yeah, excuse me. <coughs> Apologies. All right, actually, here, we got one better for you. These are the Andes Mountains from the International Space Station. That is the Canada arm on the, uh, actually, the Canada arm is on the shuttle. I didn't read my NASA caption well enough before I zoomed in here. All right, we should scroll. The Andes Mountains are a huge feature here. Um, this is does appear to be inverted, that south would be this way and north would be this way, because it appears we've got ocean here and land form back here. All right. So, the Andes Mountains, volcanoes from an oceanic plate. The plates are converging. The ocean, plate, the ocean plate subducts under the continental plate. Okay. And let's go back here to our ring of fire. All of this right here. All of these are volcanoes. Up and down the western coast of South America. Okay, those are the converging plates. What about diverging? What about a spot where the, in the two crust, two plates are moving apart? All right, here we go. Mid-Atlantic Ridge, right there. What you get is not huge, huge volcanoes. What you get is slow upwelling of magma, okay? In fact, most magma is produced this way. Most magma, because this is slow, this is continual just release of magma, okay? It's produced at the ocean ridges with seafloor spreading. Okay. Solid. This is weird. You get a split, and solid mantle begins to rise. Because some of the mantle around it, it's, it's, it's movable, but it's solid chunks. It's a, it's a whole bunch of... Solid chunks moving around each other. As the solid piece of mantle begins to rise, pressure on it decreases. And when the pressure drops, its melting point drops and it suddenly becomes molten. When it's molten, it's now less dense. And now that molten uh, basaltic uh, magma is going to rise even faster. And it's going to hit the ocean floor. And it's going to cool. And it's going to solidify. And it's going to make new oceanic crust. Okay. So the new mantle, uh, the new basaltic magma is less dense. It's going to rise even faster. And then it's going to rise. Um, in addition to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, there is the East African Ridge. We talked about that. That is a plate that, that is a spot where it's not uh, an ocean plate, but it's happening in a continental plate where you've got plates spreading apart and new crust being pushed up and formed between these plates. So that's diverging. All right. Oh, there, this is the, the Juan del Fuca, not del, Juan de Fuca plate. This is the North America plate. You've got Seattle and Portland. We're kind of zoomed in very close right here. But this is left over from an old thing, and it's moving north northeast here and it's going under this but that means there's a little bit of splitting 
and a little bit of seafloor ridge right there. No big deal. All right, last one. So uh, example of that one, the divergent along the mid-Atlantic ridge. You've got decompression melting, magma chamber, all that. East African ridge where it's happening, again, decompression melting, and you've got this huge rift valley happening. Now what's left? Intraplate volcanism. The what? Intraplate volcanism happens in the middle of a plate, not at a boundary. Right here, Hawaii, prime example. Kilauea is the most active volcano on the planet. Um, here we've got another spot in West India where we've got um, intraplate volcanism. These are all hot spots. Yellowstone. These are hot spots. Hot spots go deep. Deep, deep, deep. Not we're not talking crust. We're not talking mantle. We're talking where the mantle and the core of Earth meet. There is something down there that makes that spot hotter, and that heat rises. And there's a spot straight up. There's an elevator of heat running straight up to the surface, and this surface spot stays hot, hundred to hundred fifty degrees at, at the surface right below in the crust that it might be 100 to 150 degrees hotter than what would be expected anywhere else in the crust and the mantle. I think I said crust early in the mantle, 100 to 100 degrees, the crust, you're not, you're not going to step outside and your foot touch something 100 degrees hotter in the mantle is 100 to 150 degrees warmer than it would be anywhere else because of this huge elevator of heat. So, Actually, this is not a bad one. So deep, deep in here, this huge elevator of heat. What's interesting here is we see it in Hawaii because this elevator of heat stays in the same spot. So as this Pacific plate moves across this, the heat creates this chain of volcanoes right out here in the middle of the Pacific plate. Because the Pacific plate's moving northwest. The Aleutian Islands, this Pacific plate, that's the edge of the Pacific plate crashing that way. You got the Hawaiian Islands that's moving that way. Where was that? Western um, Western India was the other spot, but that was flooding. Like there's just a spot where these are the hot spots. There are over 40 major hot spots active around the world. They so there's Hawaii. Um, they're all over, kind of distributed. Um, all right, so um, here are the plates again. Um, hold on, got to get my thought back. Train of thought's gone. There, there's where your uh, seafloor is spreading. We talked about boundary types. I just wanted to show you there are some of your active volcanoes, earthquakes, heat flow. So there's some hot spots, okay? But then here are the hot spots where you've got kind of magma and volcanic activity in the middle of a plate. Guys, that's it. Hawaii is a great example of that. Okay, that's it. So we started with continental drift becoming plate tectonics. And then we've spent the rest of this time on volcanoes. It's time to wrap this up and test. There will be a vocabulary assignment available. Practice that. Do that. And then when the test opens up, work on the test. And then next week, we're going to go back and hit earthquakes. Okay, we're going to shake things up. Have a great day. If you've got questions, um, ask on the site. Email me. All right.